Hello, welcome to Fagor CNC 8055 MC Profile Editor Lesson Number 4 Arcs and Lines Tangent. In our exercise, I will be using a simulator software. You will be using your Fagor 8055 MC front panel. Keys needed for this exercise Enter, Recall, Up and Down Arrow Keys, the F3 key to launch a profile. Let's begin. Let's take a look at a sample blueprint. Here we have a sample of arcs, lines, arcs, and also another arc. Uh, the only thing that we have from this example is the center points of the arcs and the known radiuses. We don't even know the angle of the line. Uh, here we have another radius. We only know the value. We don't know where the center point is. Uh, through the profile editor, we should be able to enter this in uh, with the known information and complete this project. Let's begin. From the main display of the 8055 control, let's begin by pressing the F3 key for a profile. Currently we're on level 1, but to enter in a profile, we're going to have to go to level number 2. So we're going to press the level key. We're going to go to level number 2. I'm going to, this is my enter key over here on my simulator. I'm going to go ahead and enter past that down to profiles. Once I get to the profile, I'm going to go ahead and press the down arrow key to expand the library. Okay, we have profiles 1, 2, 3, 4. If I arrow down, we will see that I have many profiles drawn in here. And we can see that profile number 14 is currently not used. So I'm going to go ahead and type 14. And then I'm not going to press the Enter key. I'm going to press the Recall key. The Recall key is located on your front panel just below the Help key with this symbol on it. And it says Recall. By recalling this, I can launch the Profile Editor screen. I'm going to go ahead and press F1 for edit and F1 to choose a profile. Right now it wants us to enter in the initial point. Let's take a look at our blueprint again. Okay, our initial point, uh, we don't have one. I'd like to start right here. If you remember from lesson number two, we talked about how to calculate an initial starting point on the outside of a profile. Uh, and then in lesson number three, we talked about how to enhance that by adding a lead on uh, onto a circle. Uh, so if you haven't seen those videos, please watch video lesson number two and video lesson number three for how to add these strategies before we begin our profile. Uh, I'm going to use the linear lead on. I'm going to do a, let's say, a half inch lead on here. So we know that our point here in the X is 4.5058. So I'll enter in 4.5058, but then I'm going to use the minus key on my keyboard, and I'm going to add minus 0.5, enter. And here it calculates the value for us. Now our Y value, we know the center is at 6.5677, plus a 1 inch radius puts us up to this point here. So let's do that. And again, I'll press the plus on my keyboard, add one inch, and enter that value. Here's the preview of where our starting initial point will be. I'm going to go ahead and validate that. Now I need to do a straight line leading on to the part. Okay. I know that the end point will be at 4.5. 5058. Uh, the Y, I'm not going to enter that in at this time. I'm just going to say that I want to be traveling in a zero angle direction. Here's our preview. I'm going to go ahead and validate that. Okay. Now back to our blueprint. Okay, so now we've already done a linear lead on up to this point. Now I want to go ahead and go clockwise around the profile. So I need to do this arc portion right here. 
And the only thing I know is that it's a one inch radius and I know what the centers are. Let's go ahead and enter that data into the profile editor now. So I'm going to do a clockwise arc. The endpoint of the X2 and the Y2, I don't know those, so I'm going to leave them blank. But the center I know is at 4.5058, and the Y center I know is at 6.5677, and I know the radius is 1 inch, and I also know that I want the radius to be tangent to the previous element. So I'm going to go ahead and validate it. This time it turned it to a dotted white line. The dotted white line means that it has some incomplete data in it and the following element that's going to come tangent off of here hasn't been decided yet. So this line, this uh, circle will be trimmed eventually to the tangent line that comes off of that. So next we're going to do a straight line and I don't know where the the X2 and the Y2. I don't even know what the angle of the line is. I simply know that it's tangent. So that's the only information I can give it at this point. So I'm going to say tangent, yes, validate. Okay, next, there's really not a preview here to tell you that there's a line because it didn't have enough information to show the angle. So basically it just left it blank at this point. But it did give me my full soft key menu, you know, so I can continue programming. And in the Fagor, I can do up to three incomplete events before a solution is needed. Uh, so we're going to do another clockwise arc. The endpoint of X2 and Y2, I don't know that, but I do know where the center is. So let's look at our blueprint. So here's the center of the next arc that we're trying to create. And I know that it's at X7.5. 5561 and y of 4.1920 with a radius of 0.75. Let's go ahead and enter that data now. So again, x center is going to be 7.5561 and the y center is going to be 4.1920 and a radius of 0.75. And there's our preview. But again, I want this to also be tangent to the previous element. I'm going to go ahead and validate that. Now you'll notice that both the circle, the projected line, and the next circle all turn green. And that's because multiple choices now exist for different tangencies. So let's go through and look at all the different tangencies by choosing the next or the previous. Next. That's the next possibility. Next. Next. Now we're back to where we began. Next. Next. This is the one that we intend to use. We're going to go ahead and press enter to save it. Now you'll notice that the white dotted line was automatically trimmed to the tangent line coming off of the arc. Now we have our line completed, but we have an incomplete circle here. Now the next arc that we have is a tangent arc between two circles. Uh, we have the first one already defined, so we're going to do a clockwise arc, and we're going to look at the blueprint one more time, and we can see that it's just a three inch radius. So really that's the only information I have at this time, so I'm just going to come down. I don't know where the end point is, I don't know where the center is, but I know that the radius is three inches, and I know that it's tangent. So I'm going to enter into the tangency and validate it. And again, uh, it, it just basically leaves a blank area here. Um, but again, because I have my soft keys with line, arc, clockwise, and arc, counterclockwise, I can continue the programming. So the next arc that's going to continue will be a clockwise arc. Now I do know where the end point of this is. If you remember... Uh, we already plotted this point up here when we did our straight line to there, and that's at 4.5058. And we know the center of this arc is at 6.5677. So we basically have enough information to complete that step. Let's look at that now. Okay, X is going to be 4.5058. Um, 
I'm going to go ahead and leave this blank for the Y endpoint. And I'm going to just fill in the center again at 4.5058, the Y center of 6.5677. We know the radius is 1 inch. And I know that it wants to be tangent as well. And I'm going to go ahead and validate that. Now here, I, I, it turns green again because I have choices. So if I hit next, this is not the endpoint that I want. And this is because I left the Y blank. So the Y has two possibilities, here or here. And this is our correct choice. So I'll press Enter to save that choice. Now it's completed the information for this arc, but the tangent arc now has several possibilities. Remember the three inch tangent arc here? This three inch tangent arc, there are several possibilities that exist. Let's look at those. Next, next, there it is. This is our tangent arc three inches that we want to use. So we're going to press enter. Now it's completed the entire profile. All that remains is we need to have a lead off exit. For that we'll do another straight line and we're going to have X go to 4.5058. And I'm going to press the plus on my keyboard and add 0.5 and enter. The Y will remain the same, but I'm just going to say that the angle is zero. Again, we're going to be traveling in a zero angle and again that will be tangent to the previous arc and validate it. This project is now complete. Again, we have our lead on. We're going to go around the profile and our lead off. All that remains now is to save our project. So we're going to go ahead and save and continue. Then we're going to press the escape key two times until the finish key comes up. Once we press the F5 finish key, it wants us to name this project. We'll name this arc and line. And by pressing the Enter key, we now escape from the Profile Editor. We have Profile number 14 already saved. Okay, if I hit the down arrow key, you'll see that here's our project. Number 14, Arc and Line. Press Enter. We've selected it. Down here, we have the Z Start, the Z Begin of Cutting, the Depth, the increments for depths of cut, the feed rate, coolant, feed rate, spindle speed, clockwise spindle direction, tool number one, and then we also have our tool compensation. Here if we press this half key we can change cutter comp left, right, and no cutter comp. Here we have our Finish feed rate, spindle speed, tool number, and here I've defined to leave ten thousandths for the finish pass to be taken off. So it'll rough all the material off and then come back and take ten thousandths. Let's go ahead and hit the graphics editor and let's see what this project looks like while running. I'm going to hit cycle start. There's our completed project. You can see that the tool came from its present position over to here. Did a turn on to activate the cutter comp. We did our lead on. We machined around the outside of the part. We did a lead off. Z retracted. And the part was completed. This concludes lesson number four.